Hello, today we're going to talk about the very basics of setting up a bioactive enclosure. When you're first doing your research, it can feel really intimidating to know what you need to do and what you don't need to do in order to set up a bioactive enclosure. Bioactive enclosures are mini ecosystems. That's really what you're creating. You're creating a cleanup crew that is taking waste from your animal and making it into nutrients that your plants then uptake. And you do want, for a complete bioactive system, you want both the cleanup crew and the plants so that it is uh, taking out harmful um, ingredients from these, the waste as it's broken down. Um, if you have just bugs, you are going to want to change out your substrate every six to eight months to make sure that you don't overwhelm the system with negative nutrients and ammonia. So oftentimes uh, you'll see a bioactive build and they will start with some sort of complicated background. And the truth is that the background doesn't actually change anything about the bioactive enclosure. So it is just icing on the cake for you and for your animal. It is a great way to make sure that you're using your entire enclosure. A lot of times, especially a taller enclosure, will have a blank spot in the middle where the reptile can't actually get to and you are wasting space that the reptile could otherwise be using as part of its environment. So the background can certainly help with that, but is not actually part of the um, bioactive enclosure. The first thing to consider when setting up your bioactive enclosure is the substrate. And you have two main types of um, bioactive enclosures when it comes to substrate. You have a more tropical one, and then you have a more arid one. Your arid one is going to be great for leopard geckos and bearded dragons, hognose snakes, and then your anything else, almost anything else, is going to fall into a more uh, tropical or temperate um, setting. So then you would use a more uh, ingredients targeted at that. So for the arid, I cheated in all of my bioactive builds and I bought the BioDudes um, substrate that's specifically set up for arid. And I do believe that it made things way easier than trying to mix my own. Um, for arid, you're gonna want it to uh, hold some moisture at the bottom layers, but you're not gonna, you're gonna want the top layers to dry out so that you don't have too much humidity for your arid animal. Now you do not need to do a drainage layer for a arid animal and that is really really helpful. So if you're going to do a tropical you do want to have that drainage area. This is going to allow you to have more moisture in the under layers which will be helpful for your um, isopod uh, isopods and other cleanup crew members and then you will um, put a barrier between the drainage layer and the substrate. Now substrate, uh, you want to avoid cocoa core because cocoa core is inert and has no nutrients for your isopods or other cleanup crew members. And instead you will pick um, ingredients or soils that have a lot of nutrients. You can get a bagged pre-made bioactive substrate, uh, including uh, ABG, which is the Atlantic Botanical Gardens mix, or you can mix your own where you're taking compost and topsoil and mixing them together to create a nutritious um, substrate for your um, animal, your, the base of your um, mini ecosystem. So in addition to that, you're going to want to add additional nutrients. So this is often in the time, type, often in the way of leaf litter and um, you'll want to mix that right into your substrate. It can also include um, things like flake soil, which has got a lot of nutrients to it, and mosses, depending on how much humidity you want, adding moss to your substrate can be a great way to increase the humidity. Then you have your cleanup crew, and this is where things get really interesting. In the hobby, we talk about two main cleanup crew members. The first is often isopods, and then the second is springtails. And in here, there are both. The little tiny bugs are springtails, and then the larger ones are isopods. And these two um, creatures are going to work together to keep the enclosure nice and clean. So the isopods will eat waste, 
the springtails will eat some waste, but they'll also eat molds and make sure that um, you're not getting moldy. And um, they work together to, to do a great job cleaning it up. And which species of isopods you choose often has a lot to do with what animals are going in there. These guys are, I mean, remember how to say that, Porcelionides prunosus, um, and they're often called powders. So you can get them in powder orange, powder blue. These ones are orange cream, and there's Oreo crumble, there's powder white, and you can even get a party mix with all the different colors in there. And there's additional colors being developed and separated out and everything. So these guys are really good for both arid and temperate to tropical um, enclosures, which makes them super common as cleanup crews. There are also isopods that are more specific to arid environments, and there are isopods that are more specific to um, more tropical, moist, wet, or warm um, environments. So it is important that you are matching up your cleanup crew with the animal that's going to be in, in it. Now, if you have a snake, there are some people who use millipedes as part of their cleanup crew, and that is a choice that you can make. You want to make sure that if you are making that choice, it is with an animal that does not eat um, bugs because you don't want them to be munched on. Millipedes do have a toxin that can be um, dangerous for lizards. Uh, if you have an arid uh, cleanup crew situation, and the more arid you get, the more difficult it can be to find the appropriate bugs to do the job. But uh, d uh, blue death fainting beetles can be on that list as uh, other varieties of beetles, desert beetles. And um, you can also use dubia roaches and um, mealworms and mealworm beetles uh, called darkling beetles. Those things can all help uh, maintain a cleanup crew for a more arid situation. Um, I s still think you have some limitations on that. I have never heard of anyone successfully keeping a Euromastix with the temperatures that it needs and, and a cleanup crew. It might be it, you know, something you can do with the right cleanup crew. Isopods are probably not going to be it because it's going to be too dry and uh, too hot. Uh, the next step is plants. And plants can be a huge category. You can have some really awesome plants inside your terrarium. Uh, part of it is what plants you can keep alive, though. I'm not super great with plants as much as I love them, and I have a, a lot of them. There is an element that uh, it's survival of the fittest at my house, so the plants that live are the ones that I have that are big and beautiful. Um, so in enclosures, I often pick pothos, spider plants, things that are really hard to kill and easy to grow. Um, I have found that a lot of these plants will come back if they get trampled on by larger animals. And I do like the fact that I can keep them alive. In the arid setups, I have done Christmas cactus and aloes on the warm side because um, they're going to be tolerant of the heat lamps on those sides. And then I've done pothos on the cool sides because that's going to be tolerant of drying out fairly well without um, dying. Um, and those that's how I maintain the arid um, bioactive systems. But uh, whatever plants you can keep alive is going to be a huge part of what plants you should put in there. Now plants that grow really big being put in a small enclosure can be complicated. You can do that by trimming them back um, but you will have to do ongoing maintenance to make sure that your plants uh, continue to do well in the space that you've provided them. That is all you actually need for a bioactive setup. I know it can get complicated, I know it can get confusing, I know there's still a lot of questions, um, but this is just the basics of getting you started on creating your own bioactive enclosure. So uh, real quick, you're going to need to figure out your substrate, you're going to need to figure out your cleanup crew and the plants that you're going to put in there, and that is it. So like, it is super uh, intimidating to deal with the background question, and you may still decide that you want to deal with that it can that that I found is the that part can take weeks of building <laughs> um, whereas the uh, actual process of setting up the bioactive enclosure is is a lot more straightforward um, I will be doing additional bioactive enclosures real soon here and I will be showing you the process step by step so definitely subscribe like this video if it was at all helpful leave questions and comments below 
you will see our egg counter and additional animal videos up next. I'd love it if you stuck around and no matter what, have a great day.